electricity is the way of the future now. Most people seem to think so at least. The governments of the world have basically said, it's my way or the highway, by announcing dates by which all gasoline-powered vehicles will be outlawed. The car industry must adapt or perish. This indicates a potentially high return on investment. However, countries are fighting over access to the precious metals that companies like Tesla, Ford, Nissan, and others rely on something fraught with its own set difficulties, agreements, and graft. Fortunately, in this video, We'll be discussing the reasons electric car manufacturers are lying to you. Exactly how cleaner are electric vehicles? Is there more the story of the electric race than meets the eye? Moreover, who will emerge victorious in the end? Hi there, I'm Jules and welcome to our channel. If you're new, please subscribe and tap the notification bell to be updated for more upcoming videos like this. Buckle up and let's get started. Rivian was established in 2009 by a young MIT engineer who saw a need for a different kind of automobile. He decided to electrify the truck and the SUV, two iconic American vehicles combining his two passions, nature and cars. As the main rival to Tesla, Rivian quickly attracted major investors like Ford and Amazon, who placed an order for a fleet of 100,000 all-electric vans. Even though Rivian had not yet sold a single car, this increased the company's credibility and generated excitement for its IPO in 2021. Imagine the largest IPO in almost a decade. It's insane for a business that hasn't established a track record yet. Because of Tesla, the EV market is out of control. Despite all of the hype, Rivian's stock has since fallen, losing more than 80% of its value. And there are numerous causes for this, including problems with the tech market, energy issues, and supply chain disruptions. EVs are not yet as profitable as conventional cars, but there's also that numerous important issues require attention. Both the market for the electric vehicle is expanding rapidly. The clock is running out and the competition is fierce. Now, let's answer the question, are electric cars really cleaner? Yes, but in a way, also no. Let's see why, shall we? In general, compared to a gasoline engine in a typical car, which has about 2,000 moving parts, electric cars are constructed more simply. They're only about 20 in the electric motor. Therefore, cylinders and piston as well as exhaust system all become obsolete. The battery is what makes an EV necessary. The size of the battery is surprising. It's usually located under the car's floor and takes up a sizable portion of the length of the car. The battery is also to blame for how much heavier electric vehicles are compared to a gasoline-powered vehicles. These batteries have weigh range of 600 to 1,000 pounds. Due to the fact that electric cars don't burn any fuel, their tailpipe emissions are of course much lower. But after that, things become considerably more challenging. According to research, manufacturing an EV emits 60% more CO2 than manufacturing a gasoline-powered vehicle. And the main reason for that is the production of disposal batteries. Consequently, a combination of metal is required to construct a battery. You need lithium, cobalt, and nickel, three guys who will unquestionably have a significant impact on politics in the years to come. They can be found primarily in remote nations like Chile, the Congo, China and Australia. Mining and shipping these minerals are the issues. The amount of carbon dioxide produced by extracting one ton of lithium is equivalent to burning 15,000 pounds of coal, and will need a ton more of these minerals in the future. So all of this occurs before you even purchase your expensive vehicle. Then, once you have your cool Tesla, you must use electricity to charge it, right? Whether or not your country produces electricity using clean, renewable energies will determine how clean this is. To give you an idea, the ICCT estimates that if you live in the US or Europe, your electric car will be 60% more environmentally friendly than one powered by fossil fuels. It will be about 40% cleaner if you live in China. Only about 20-30% to of India's air is cleaner. The bottom line is this, when considering a vehicle entire life cycle, electric vehicles are unquestionably more environmentally friendly than gasoline-powered ones. However, it might take some time after production before that fully benefits the environment. And the good news is that things will improve because batteries and renewable energy sources still have a long way to go. Now, before revealing more issues in what the EV industry features hold, please give a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video so far. And stay tuned until the end to get the whole truth. Also, if you want to support this channel more, you might want to try our super thanks wherein your comments will be highlighted or join our membership program to support this channel. So what does the EV market's future hold? Well. Think about this, by 2035, which is not that far away, gasoline vehicle sales will be entirely prohibited in both Europe and the US, and other important nations like China have the same target date in mind. Currently, 
Bloomberg estimates that there are only 12 million cars worldwide, which is a small fraction of the total numbers of automobiles, and that has two implications. First and foremost, if the auto industry is to survive, it must move quickly. But secondly, it indicates that there is a sizable market share and a chance waiting to be grabbed. This is an actual shift in a huge, huge market. This is also true for domestic producers of electric vehicles like Tesla, Lucid, and Rivian, who have advantage because they have only ever produced EVs since the beginning of the time. But traditional automakers like Ford or Volkswagen, who have been producing cars for many years, sometimes over a century, are also making every effort to make the transition. The market is therefore becoming crowded. Then, what's holding everything back? There are a few technical issues as well as enormous political issues. There's a quip that says electric cars are like pancakes. The first one is terrible, the second is alright, but the third is right on the money. But there are still some challenges to be resolved before the mass adoption can occur. Range anxiety is one issue. In other words, the anxiety that you won't have enough battery power to get where you need to go and will instead stuck cursing in the middle of a desert. When the range was initially limited, this was understandable. However, many current models can easily travel 200 or 300 miles on a single charge, which is a significant distance given that Americans travel on average 30 miles per day. Governments and businesses are making significant investments to construct thousands of charging stations, which also helps. But how effective they will be in comparison to standard gas pumps? They have to be, given that many car owners lack a driveway or garage in which to charge their vehicle. Next comes the cost. A major consideration is the price. Electric vehicles cost more than those powered by gasoline. And while it is true that electric cars have lower running costs, many people are still hesitant to spend a significant amount of money upfront. However, the higher cost of the minerals required to make these enormous batteries are the main cause of this issue. However, given that battery prices are declining, this is anticipated to change, which leads to some even darker issues, starting with a race for batteries. When it comes to the electric revolution, cobalt, nickel, and lithium are more important than oil, which we had before. By 2030, the demand will have increased by 15 times, according to Bloomberg. So much so that if you don't properly recycle it, we'll completely run of lithium by 2050. Major nations like the US only produce about 1% of the world's lithium output and completely import the other 99%. And one lesson learned by the nations during the semiconductor shortage is that it's risky to depend on imports from other countries for basic supplies. Especially when you take into account that more than half of the world's lithium is processed and refined in China alone. Yet why? Because China is currently dominating the world for electric cars and produces and sells batteries at low cost, their vehicles are cost-effective, sometimes even cheaper than those powered by gasoline. Chinese companies are emerging as formidable competitors. Warren Buffett supports companies like NIO and BYD. Therefore, traditional automakers must be cautious, but problem goes beyond that. Superpowers compete in monopoly games all over the world to get the resources they require. And frequently, these minerals are extracted under dubious circumstances. Consider the Democratic Republic of the Congo. One of the mineral richest countries in the world, Americans travel there to obtain uranium during World War II for well, you know what? It turns out that Congo has the highest concentration of cobalt of any country in the world. However, the major of these cobalt mines are currently on under Chinese control. Additionally, Chinese suppliers supply cobalt to American automakers like Ford, GM, and Tesla. Workers in these mines earn about 30 cents per hour while squeezing through narrow tunnels. Additionally, they simply aren't paid if they become ill. Finding a different, more sustainable way to obtain these minerals must therefore to be a top priority for the EV industry. All of this raises the query, is the electric world for everyone? Markets in the Europe and the US currently rely on the government aid and tax breaks. They can meet their arbitrary deadlines thanks to this. Additionally, infrastructure is a factor in addition to automobiles. What about other nations though? According to some researchers, developing countries may have a harder time adjusting than we realize. This is brought on by several obstacles, primarily technological and financial. Examples include the ability to build a vast network of charging stations and the ability of the electric grid to power all of these cars. Although the answer to this is still up in the air, two- and three-wheeled vehicles appear to be a common solution in these nations. According to data, however, EV prices should be significantly reduced. What sure is that the electric race is on? This is a true revolution with participation from the US, Europe, Japan, and China. Whereas the auto industry was once difficult to break into, the electric industry is now an entirely different animal with new players and new rules. There are still many issues to be solved before we can achieve our goal of having zero emissions. However, there are fantastic investment opportunities in this market. 
So let's buck up because new names will undoubtedly replace some of the old names. In 20 to 30 years, this car industry will be completely different. This is a long-term venture to invest in, avoiding falling for widespread hype and seizing opportunities as they present themselves, being merely patient because values always prevail in the long run even where there may be momentary excitement. That's a wrap up for today but please leave a comment below because we'd love to hear your thoughts on this whole matter. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, like and share this video. Also, there are other things you must know like what electric cars are coming in 2023 that might shake up the car industry. To learn more, click and watch the next video here.